Yes. Yeah, last time I checked. Well, I came out at 40. <laughs> never too late. No, that's never too late. That is very true. And you came out a lot younger than I did, right? Yeah, I came out in high school. Oh my God. <laughs> I always have a difficult time sort of wishing I came out at a younger age because I have a son who's, you know, he's going to be 16 in July. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it almost feels like I'm wishing him away. You know, if I, you know, if I think to myself, you know, if I'd come out when I was younger and didn't get married to the person I got married to. I had the white picket fence American dream life. Yeah. You know, the wife, the kid, the beautiful home, six-figure income in this beautiful neighborhood that was also very conservative in Texas, mm -hmm. where we didn't know any gay people in the neighborhood. And all of a sudden, I'm going to come out as transgender. <laughs> it, was, it was a really difficult thing. It was when I came out, it, it was... It was a family affair, and my family is amazing about the entire thing, and I love them. It was this moment in high school where I was completely restricting myself from life, and my parents just, they never saw me, and they knew that something was up. So my dad just was like, is there something wrong? And my mom said, are you transgender? Really? And I said, yeah, I want to be a woman. And they looked at each other, and they looked away, and they said, let's do this. And so that was my experience with them. I've been very lucky and I realize that not everyone has the same privileges that I do. Yeah. So I really try to take what I had and draw the good and spread it to others because I know that there's a difference between your own family and the family that you create. So I try to be that family member for other people. And I give what I can and I do what I can to be a support system, but they were phenomenal with the entire thing and they just they 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 got my back and they're and they're baby girl so that's true daddy's little princess that's amazing. My my coming out was actually like a multi-step process. There was, you know, my wife, there was my son, there was my sisters. I have three younger sisters. I was the only boy. The first person I came out to was actually uh, my my then wife and her reaction was to, you know, let's see how, where it goes and see what happens. You know, it eventually ended in divorce. And then of course I came out to my son and he was eight at the time. And that was probably the most awful experience of my entire life. I remember him crying, no, no, don't go. I remember the pain of that separation like it happened today. Because it did happen today and every day that I'm separated from my son because that pain repeats over and over and over again. The last person I came out to was my mother because I was scared to come out to her and um, she was born in another country, you know, South America, kind of other ways of thinking of things, and she did not take it well. She asked me if uh, I liked men. So when I told her that I was not attracted to men, that just confused her even more. And she asked me then when, why would I want to transition? I actually had to cut her off for a while. I, she doesn't call me by my old name at all anymore. So it's, it's, we're in a much better place now. I understand that I have different privileges in the fact that yeah. of how I exist and um, because of that I didn't come out until a year ago. Really? Come out. Wow. I didn't come out socially because the thing was is that it was never a secret. No one just ever asked me. Can I ask you a quick question? Absolutely. Are you straight? I'm yeah I'm straight. You're into men? I'm into men. Okay so I can. So, oh yeah. yes you ask those questions. Yeah. I have been in you precocious and unsafe situations. <laughs> yeah. I feel like when you're transgender, it's expected for you to tell everyone that you're transgender. Yeah. And that it is your duty to inform other people who are interested in you, right. socially or sexually, so that you spare them any blow to their uh, ego. I have no problem talking about it, and I will only talk about it if someone asks me to talk about it, like the situation. <laughs> Last year on March 31st, which was National Transgender Day Visibility, right. I did a video with Miss Stephanie Frosch. Did you? It was called Trans Girl Comes Out to Straight Men Who Love Her. Not sure they're five five years. Years now. Who the hell is this girl that looks just like Katy Perry? Like, oh, it's like, She told me that you guys both have crushes on me. Well, okay, can we cut? So, would your opinions change in me if I told you guys that I was transgender? And that was how I came out to everyone, and I just sort of have been living my life ever since. Do you think that there is other reasoning that was behind you having, not you having to, but you coming out when you did versus earlier? It has given me a unique story, which I think has touched people. I think it allows older transitioners to 
to relate to me and my story now, as an older transitioner th the thing I got actually more than anything is you've lived this long as this person how come you just can't keep going for the sake of your family that is probably the one argument I got more than anything I, I could not pretend that I did not have this knowledge of myself now it all of a sudden became an imperative like I had to transition like it was actually a desperation I have to do this or I am going to die I mean that seriously I was not going to survive very long if I had not transitioned that's I have no doubt of that what was that moment like that most formidable moment that was the catalyst for okay I just have to do this <sighs> oh god I was kind of caught in a compromising situation and uh, I had to kind of cut a conversation short with my father um, that had something to do with what I was doing back then to kind of alleviate the transgender feelings I had. Mm -hmm. I said, I gotta go, I gotta go. And I hung up on him and I didn't realize those would be the last words I ever told my dad. I don't know, it just kind of sparked this thing in me to find out why I was different, why I had these strange feelings or what I considered strange at the time. If I had transitioned at 18, I kind of wish that when I'd gone to college, because you know a lot of people tend to experiment in college and, and especially with their identities, I kind of wish that I had done that at 18. Um, um, I think one of the most difficult things to transitioning at 40 is that you're starting over your life in a very fundamental way. Also relationship wise, it's a different ball game to be out in the lesbian world in your mid 40s than it is in your mid 20s. I don't, I like to say I don't really have a dating pool, I have like a dating puddle. You know, it's there's just not as many people out there. Dating I have a I dating puddle. But people come into your life when they're meant to. Just because we don't start at the same time doesn't make it any no less valid. Than how we felt before she told us. Mom, don't cry. I always say this, that if someone, if the universe manifested itself into someone mm -hmm. and that person came out or came down and talked to me and said, hey, here's a get out of jail free card. <laughs> to do it all over again, come back as a natally born female, and to just live simply and easily, I would turn it down. Because wow. that, I, I realized that I would not be who I am without it. And I do my best not to let my gender define the intricacies of who I am, right. but I understand that the experiences that I have transitioning and the experiences that I've acquired are what do define me, and those sort of go hand in hand. So even though I don't let my gender be everything that I am, I understand that I am who I am because I did this. And I love myself. And it's taken years to get here. <laughs> but it's something that once you learn to let go and just to understand that your soul has this job because it was strong enough to have this job, then you can just enjoy life and just take it by the balls. <laughs> Yes, take it by the balls. That's an awesome way to put it. One of the cool things is to have been able to see both sides of, both the sides of life. Yeah, I mean, if there is a positive, it's yeah. that. I mean, there are very few men who know what it's like to be a woman. Full confession, I actually met Nikki uh, years a, ago. Yeah, years ago in a class I was actually speaking at, a college class. I remember you vividly the first time I saw you. And I was like, oh wow, look at her. And I thought to myself, that's amazing. Things we fantasize as a young transgender child that we, we hope we could have, you know? And you were like the living embodiment of it. It just gave me hope, you know? It, I think whenever I see young transgender people, it always gives me hope that tomorrow's gonna be better. I'm moving to New York, uh, getting into fashion, mm. creating a base where I can, and then I eventually want to be able to create a makeup line that is sort of inspired by the manifestation that was my transition in beauty. Hmm. And I want to take the funds and I want to start a foundation that, that allows for scholarships, for uh, medical intervention, for housing, for schooling, for whatever anyone needs. And I want to sort of do what I can to give back. I really believe that I'm meant to be the person for someone else or that I never had. And I can't do that by just being quiet. What you're describing, by the way, is something I call the circle of trans. Explain. Okay, so you know the circle of life kind of yes. thing from Lion King. And you start off as like a baby trans, right? And you and you go through your transitions and you learn all these things and eventually you become a mentor. Mm -hmm. But in order for you to become a mentor, you have to be visible, yeah. right? And then what happens is, is that next class of transgender, you know, baby transgender kids comes out and you're all of a sudden their mentor. So I call that the circle of trans. I like that.
I think that the fact that you have a positive outlook on the experience and that yeah. you took the sourest lemon that you <laughs> could have been given Aww. and made something resembling lemonade, I think is super. It's something that we can all learn from. That moment when it all clicks into place and you finally accept yourself for who you are, it's an amazing, it's great to be out in the sun. Well, thank you ladies both so much for being here. I've had the privilege of knowing both Maya and Nikki for years and years and years. That's and true. It makes my heart smile bringing two of the most inspirational <laughs> women in my life together. Thank so you. So I'm so happy. Be sure to check out both of their social medias. The links will be in the description. And if you are going through a transition, whether you're old or young, know that there is no limit for it. And you know what? Leave a comment below complimenting the person above you. Just like spread that. some positive stuff. I like yes. that. Ooh, and that's, yeah. That's cute. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.